The Maryland Association of Counties, otherwise known as MACO, congratulates you on your general election victory. MACO is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization that advocates on behalf of county governments. We represent all 23 counties and Baltimore City, and we welcome you as a newly elected county official to our membership. We look forward to working with you over the course of the next four years and beyond. In this video, you will hear from current and former elected officials offering advice to help you through your first year, how to best prepare yourself for holding public office, how to balance the demands of elected and personal life, and how to work with the media. We hope you enjoy the video and learning from elected officials who have served before you. One of the biggest challenges you have when you first get elected is to understand the form of government you have, but also to encourage people to work with you. So you get to appoint a lot of directors and secretaries and things like that. And it's getting people to come in because many of them know that you may only be there for four years. And so they would only be there for four years. So they kind of look and like, oh, we hope you're gonna be there for eight years if I'm gonna look for a job. So the initial challenge is to get these people to uh, be your uh, directors because they're the ones you're going to delegate the work to. I would say basically the campaign's over. You've made a lot of commitments, a lot of promises during the campaign. I would encourage you to get educated, understand both sides of whatever position, whatever discussion being had. And the biggest thing I think is you, you need to be true to your constituents and go out there and not only seek the people that agree with you, but really go out and dig into the people that don't agree with you necessarily and find a way of educating them and yourself at the same time. I think the idea is that when you come into a newly elected position, you come in understanding that you don't have all the answers, that there are people there um, that have had some years of experience uh, dealing with public issues, dealing with uh, community service, people with a wealth of knowledge that they're anxious to share. And my best advice is to come in with an open mind, being willing to learn. You know, all of us get elected to public office thinking we're going to come charging in and we're going to make a difference, we're going to make our community stronger and that's, that's very important. It's a very important thing to be driving us. But the idea is that nothing gets accomplished without collaboration and having respect for the fact that there are a lot of other elected people too with their own ideas, with their own agendas and you're going to be more successful when you're willing to approach your duties with a sense that I'm part of a bigger effort. I think the best piece of advice is really to listen to everyone. Even if you disagree with them on the policy issues, allow them to come and speak to you. Maybe there's some way to build consensus and maybe there's a win-win that you can craft as a, as a leader now. As a new official, the best piece of advice that I received uh, was that I was going to start to join a team in county government, uh, have very thick skin, uh, be a good listener and be able to share the information that I have with the other commissioners to try to gain consensus on the board because this is a team effort. Well, having served um, 20 years in the military and being a graduate of the United States Naval Academy, um, you're not allowed to have surprises. So when I came into office, I made sure that I surrounded myself by good people because good people make you who you are. And so um, the foundation that you have, the good people will ensure that you don't have surprises when you come into office. The biggest surprise I encountered when I was first elected is you got to remember I came from uh, 32 years in county background as a police officer and police chief and I thought I knew everything about government and when you're elected in, into that executive role as county executive you really is a shock that you have all these uh, demands placed upon you, the time constraints uh, and uh, it, it was a learning experience all over again on how to govern the way the folks expect you to govern. I think the most rewarding experience is something that you wouldn't think about. I think anybody who runs for public office has a passion for something, very specific um, issue that they get involved in politics for. And then when you actually get into office 
and you see all of the inner workings and the policy decisions, things that get decided that the public doesn't even know about. When you have an opportunity to learn about those issues and how they really impact the public, the things that you don't think about when you're running are the things that end up being the, the, the most rewarding when they can really help people. I'm in my 38th year. I am the longest serving, living is the operative word, local elected official in the history of Maryland. And what really I look back on is my best feeling about being in this job is that I know I can make government work for people. The uh, realization didn't really hit me in the beginning. I was so busy getting used to the job. But when I recognize that with pe you're the most accessible to your constituency, you don't go away to serve, you don't go to Annapolis, you don't go to Washington. And people, as you've heard before, they see you in the market, they see you in church, they see you at schools, they see you at events in the community, and they just, you're the one that is accessible. And so it is very rewarding to know that whether or not it's a local problem, state or federal, or maybe private sector, you have the ability to get people to respond to you. Frankly, my first year in office, I did cast a vote and it was exclusively political. And I knew at the time that it wasn't the best policy and it's really haunted me since then. Um, I was able to go back and change a vote months later, but I really think that no elected official should cast a vote exclusively based upon politics. Just remember, the election's over, you won, now do the right thing. You'll find as an elected official that if you do the job correctly, your life is 24-7 being an elected official. The most difficult thing for me in that first year was remembering that I was a person and taking care of that person as well as making sure that I was the best elected official I could be. I was lucky enough to be able to serve as a commissioner before being elected county executive. And in that time, I tried to attend as many community events as I could, as many meetings as I could, made myself very accessible and available to the people of Cecil County. And that's a good thing. But in the meantime, I forgot to take care of myself and uh, take care of my, my family. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to be afraid to go to the store because you're going to run into somebody that either you know or they've recognized you because your picture's in the newspaper and not be afraid to go out and <clears throat> be in the public. So it's important to take care of yourself and separate that time for you personally uh, away from that time professionally. I think uh, early on I was told to not commit my vote too early until I had all the information or all the facts related to the decision I was getting ready to make. And so I did actually make a, a decision or a commitment too, too early, too quickly, and uh, regretted that uh, because other information came out after the fact that I wish I'd had when I made my initial decision. So just uh, holding back my decision and waiting till I feel like all the facts are out and all I've gathered all the information I could. I feel more comfortable that doing that now, and that's sort of been my MO since that first experience early on in my first term. The biggest challenge after I realized how accessible I, need, I was and how responsive I was, was recognizing I couldn't solve the problems. It was really a collaboration. I had to actually analyze how to help that person, and sometimes it was working with other members of the council, sometimes it was other members uh, in the community, businesses, and so um, that learning uh, how to network, learning how to use the position you have to get results for the people that look to you for the solution to their problems. The biggest challenge is, uh, as an official probably is trying to get people to get more involved in what you're doing and what the county's doing. A lot of times information comes to us that's not given to the public and the public only sees one side of it and trying to get them educated and informed on how we how the process works. Um, government's been around a long time so things aren't as easy as one two three. There's a lot of deep-rooted issues and deep-rooted paths that people have to follow and I think once you're in office you really have to get an understanding of that and be able to convey that to your constituency. The thing that helped, and I think that probably the most critical thing is that 
that, that balance with your family and managing the other two you know, careers or two jobs, if you will. And the one thing that really helped us, and I know it sounds kind of simple, but we actually went to a shared Google Calendar. Uh, you know, my legislative aide works very closely with my wife to make sure that the events that I have scheduled, uh, that my wife knows about them, and that if my wife wants to schedule things that are family events, that they're on the calendar as well, and my legislative aide gives you know, deference to those uh, events and activities. So just having a, a calendar that we share between my aide, my wife, and I has really helped to sort of uh, alleviate uh, stress or concern about you know, scheduling things and, and making sure that I have enough time for my family as well as my other two uh, uh, other jobs. That's one of the toughest things that one has to come to grip with. I like to say that this is the best 70 hour a week part-time job that one can have but it takes a big drain on our spouses, on the family. So whether we've done it or not, you should try to carve out time to be with the family, even to the tune of going out of the county to go eat so that constituents don't be on you all the time. You know, because this is a job that you have to live constantly. Even if it's a part-time job, it's something you live with, sleep with, and you can't get away from. I think the average citizen thinks the commissioners in Allegheny County have way more power than what we actually have. Uh, Allegheny County is sort of unique. We do have what's known as code home rule. We can pass laws that affect only Allegheny County. And sometimes we get weekly requests. Well, can't you pass a law to do this? And no, we can't. Um, and as sh I'm sure you've heard from other elected officials. No single elected official can do anything by themselves. In Allegheny County, we have three commissioners. It takes a vote of two commissioners, uh, and that vote has to be done at a public meeting. So uh, as hard as it is to swallow being a business person, I'm used to being able to snap my fingers and make things happen. But in government, you learn that it's going to be a slower process. You have to build consensus. You have to build partnerships and move things along. And, and the average citizen just thinks you, you ought to be able to open your mouth and, and change the way things are. I think the biggest misconception that most most people have about local officials and even state and federal officials that is that we're getting rich. Um, we're making huge salaries. Politicians are um, all receiving kickbacks and money from various uh, interest groups and so forth. And uh, it's it's difficult being a former police chief to hear that kind of complaint. But uh, you just have to put your best face on and go out there and do the right things and, and let the public know that you'll make tough decisions uh, and it always won't be in favor of the little guy and it won't always be in favor of the big guy. I guess my perspective has changed in the sense that I've done the job now. I, I saw how when I came in I had all my ideologies out there, how I wanted to act and what I wanted to do and what I thought we could do. And I guess after you look at how the government is run and you start educating yourself on the processes, I think it becomes more important and, and your perspective changes in that you, you really have to go out and, and dig. You really have to know your job. And when I say know your job, that means every issue that comes up, you really need to know the pros and cons and, and really dig into that and make a conscientious decision. And the next part would be that you really have to win over and you have to educate your fellow commissioners if you want to have that majority to move forward with some issues. So. It looks a lot easier when you're on the outside looking in, when you're running for office and you think you know all the answers, and you're expected to because you answer a lot of candidate surveys and questions and questionnaires and participate in a lot of debates. So people expect you to have all the answers. What you will find when you get into, the, into office is you do not know all the answers, and quite frankly, the issues are very, very complicated. Well, I think probably the most important thing that we do is constituent service, really serving the people and better understanding how each of the departments and the various organizations that help us to serve better work and function, whether it's the timeline or who actually puts those boots on the ground to make sure things get done for our communities. So I think being able to really understand the inner workings of some of those departments might have prepared me better. It's easy as you're working through the campaign to talk about the big picture and in generalities, but 
I think an effective elected official takes the time to get to know how things get done and make sure they get done for the people. Politics is a contact sport and that's something that most folks don't realize. Uh, when you're running for office, yeah, your, your opposition may take a two, few jabs at you, but once you become an elected official, you are fair game. And that's not a difficult, or that's not an easy thing to reconcile within yourself. You, every, every elected official I know wants to do the best of their ability, but if that falls short for a lot of people because you don't make the decisions that they want you to. So you're subject to a lot of criticism and, and that's not easy. So if you go into it saying, hey, listen, you know, I'm going to have to have tough skin doing this job. I'm going to make decisions for the right way and for the right reason. Then you can be satisfied in the job that you're doing. There is no such thing as a typical day. It's very much like women's work. It's never done. You do dishes, there's more dishes. You do laundry, there's more laundry. Uh, you, uh, it's, it's not typical, it's just ongoing. And I've heard others say, if you don't recognize it, that you have a personal life and you have your own needs to take care of, it takes over. It, it takes nine days a week if you give it. You know, it's like uh, Forrest Gump's box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. You can be involved in uh, dealing with a complaint about a pothole. You can get a call from a constituent who has an, an issue with the Board of Education, something that as an elected person in our county we might not have a direct influence over, but of course we know all of the people. We, we can be a conduit to getting answers for people that have an issue. Then there will be uh, something happening with Annapolis. Maybe there's some proposed legislation that will have an impact on county life. And so it's important that we take the time to review all of that type of uh, material that comes our way so that we can address it intelligently. Uh, there's, so there's those bigger issues. Uh, there might be meetings with a, with a state senator or a delegate or maybe even with the governor's office uh, to talk about long-range plans for the state economy, for the projects that we're trying to do uh, in concert with each other. So it, it, runs, it runs the full realm from an individual citizen complaint to weighty negotiations with uh, other parties about quality of life in our community. And then, you know, receptions in the middle where you would go and, and visit with the Board of Regents at the university or sit down with the, with the hospital executive board to talk about how county government can be useful in providing services through for their respective agencies. And so it, it, it really runs uh, from, from one end to the other. The media is a stakeholder. The media has to uh, tell your story. So with any of your stakeholders, you want to form a relationship. Relationships in uh, any of your jobs, whether you're an elected official or whether you're doing another job, is about forming relationships. So what I do is, is that I uh, have coffee, I have lunch, I um, try to talk to the media and feed the media because they have a job to do. And if they're not fed, they don't have anything to tell. So what I do is I try to feed them all this information so they know what's going on in my community so they can tell, uh, tell my story. And um, that will help you in the process. As the county executive, it's very important to have a very good public information officer work with you in your department uh, very closely. Because sometimes it is you trying to get your information out. Maybe there was some security issue or some uh, storm or something like that or you're developing some new policy so you're trying to get it out and then often it's them trying to f get in and find out what it is you're doing so it's kind of like watching a tennis game the ball's going back and forth so you really have to have a good person that works with you that knows the media person knows them very well and you also need to meet with them on a regular basis so that you understand them personally and know that some of them are going to be a little aggressive toward what they want to do towards you some of them will be very open and uh, nice to you but you uh, and often you're busy so that person that PIO the public information officer is the one who's going to be speaking but it's their voice but it's your words that they have to do so they have to you really have to have a close relationship to them too to be able to do that but often the media is like no we only want to talk to you <laughs> we're not going to talk to the PIO so you have to develop that uh, relationship and know which type of media is going to be there on a regular basis and you also will find out that sometimes they're going to call you and say we want to talk to you about this issue and after you've answered that question then they get into the real issue they wanted to learn about <laughs> so it can vary
your staff are you're going to be your experts. When you run for office, you think you know everything. You get into office and you find out that you don't know really much of anything. So you need to trust the staff. You, they need to know what your expectations are of them. Uh, you need to make it clear that you want, don't want to be caught surprised on issues, that they need to make sure that they're briefing you with the correct information and not telling you what they think you want to hear, but what you really need to know. You need to trust but verify. MAKO has wonderful resources absolutely wonderful resources that will provide in-depth information for you. If you feel like you need additional information about some subjects, those resources are there for you. Well, I think our staff is invaluable, um, and I thank them every time I get an opportunity. I mean, without our staff, we really couldn't get things accomplished for the community, and after all, that's why we're supposed to be there. So I think working with our staff, understanding their challenges, their difficulties, you know, what are they going through, will make our job much better and make us be more effective for our community. Well, I think the key word there is professional staff. Uh, when you get elected as, as an official, you are the boss, quote unquote, but those people you're working with, they're, they're the professionals. In Allegheny County, most of our uh, department heads have been with the county 20, 25, 30, 35 years. They know the ins and outs. Every elected official goes in with the idea that they can change the world, and you find out that you can't. You, you can make suggestions to the department heads. Uh, our people have been very receptive, but it's something you have to really work and see what you can do, what you can't do. Uh, you're dealing with all kinds of state regulations, uh, federal regulations. So it's a very slow, arduous uh, process. And you have to earn the respect and the trust of your department heads, because like I say, you're the new guy on the block, and yet you're the boss. You're trying to tell them what to do. And uh, you have to make it a true partnership. Well, your authority really lies if you can gain a majority of the commissioners. Uh, because as a commission, you are a commission and your authority only lies with that. But your, your responsibility to your constituents is, is really important. Uh, you really have to go out there and discuss the situation with them. You can't just get a broad view of what's going on overall in the county. You really have to get next to the people that it's affecting. You have to sit with them and get them to understand and get you to understand their concerns. Um, everyone has a reason for why they don't want something and you can't just sit back and say and dismiss it. You need to be able to sit back and tell them, here's the process, here's why it is what it is. And hopefully from that exchange, you'll gain some knowledge that might change your opinions in your mind. So the interaction between the constituency would probably be the thing that uh, my perspective changed the most. I think you really need their input. In my case, I would say, and I, I'm sure this is true throughout many of the municipalities in Maryland, the, the county that I represent, Anne Arundel County, is very different in its different areas and our different council districts. And my district in particular tends to be very rural, which is very unlike the majority of the rest of the county. So I think it's, you know, it is an interesting role where you find yourself part of a larger decision-making body, um, but yet you also represent a certain section or cross-section of the folks that are in that um, municipality or jurisdiction that you represent and in my case you know advocating for uh, legislation or policy that is um, pro my constituents pro agriculture in this case uh, or pro more of a rural life um, those those that's where those sort of roles intersect those responsibilities so you listen to those folks try to understand what they're wanting what their desires are and then go back and advocate that to the rest of that decision-making body and help them to try to understand how policies that we set countywide sometimes don't always necessarily fit back in the local jurisdiction. So sort of trying to strike that balance between making sure your constituents' voices are heard and that their concerns are heard, but also setting good policy that um, can apply broadly to the entire jurisdiction that you represent as a whole. As an elected official, whether you're at the county level or the state level, or even higher than that, the federal level, you have to have partners. And when you have partners, you have a shared priority. So what we do on the council is that we look at our shared priorities, we go to retreats and we talk about our shared priorities. And when we have those shared priorities, we take those initiatives and drive them home in our community. And when I say drive them home, our, our citizens are already coming and telling us what is, whether it's public safety, whether it's education, whether it's economic development. Those are our shared priorities. And we take those and we work on them together. So how do you get support? You get support by having a shared agenda. 
We had a, a need for a new middle school in our county uh, right during the recession, which made it a challenge for funding. But uh, the, the, the need for the middle school was well established and had been for years. And we had already started the groundwork uh, to get the engineering underway, to locate the property where it would go, and to get all the pieces in place so that we could build the new middle school. Then the recession hit. Um, there were some changes in the political makeup of the county governing body. And uh, it got to be a little more of a social challenge than it was a practical uh, challenge or practical obstacles to building the school. When it finally came down to a vote among our county council, we actually lost the school vote uh, on a vote of four to three. Not being willing to let that stand, we then went back and again, following my, my, uh, my goal of building bridges with the community, we went out and talked to the PTAs, to the parents of the students involved in this new school. From that effort came a new organization called Parents in Action, where the community among the parents of the school children organized to go to, to, go to, bat, to lobby the county council to fund this school. We went to the business community who understood that investing in our schools is one of the most visible things we can do to prepare ourselves for a stronger community and to be in a better position uh, post-recession to train people for jobs, to uh, improve our quality of, of life and so forth. And so we had strong advocates from the building community or the business community joining our parents about uh, how important it is to build this particular school. And so finally, after a number of public meetings, a lot of uh, uh, behind the scenes uh, conversations with county council members, we actually were able to reverse the vote and um, our school was approved by a vote of four to three to go forward. And so today that school is under construction and will be open for the students uh, next September. First of all, it's not by finding out that everyone loves me because that's not possible. Because of those tough decisions that we have to make, you'll make people very unhappy and you'll make some people happy. I think it's a general sense of the community. Is the county, is the city, uh, doing well? Are, are our children being educated? Are our streets safe? Uh, are we open and uh, transparent to the people who want to see what's going on? Do we keep an open ear? Are people uh, able to come in and talk with us, express their concerns? They may not like what you have to say, and I found this out with, through lots of emails and phone calls. I don't like the decision made, but I do appreciate you talking with me and hearing my side. So uh, it's a balance of things. It's sometimes how you feel when you leave the office. Do you feel you did the best you could? for your constituents, the people who elected you? Well, you don't want to measure your success by, making, by having all of the votes go your way because, trust me, they're not all going to go your way. But if you can make progress and be a voice and collect the facts and be a voice for those that need the help, as long as progress is being made, then that is definitely a measure of success. However, it is great when you are able to gain all the information and convince your colleagues to go along with your point of view. If you've done your homework and you get gain the respect of your colleagues, I think that's what's, what's made a huge difference. Um, four years ago, I was the new kid on the block and it takes time and perseverance and you have to be patient. Uh, but once you gain the respect of your colleagues, which maybe you should have right off the bat because you were elected right along with them, but when you're that newly elected official and you can get the respect of your colleagues and get them to understand your point of view, that also is a, is a huge measure of success. As a police chief, I was uh, president of the Maryland Chiefs of Police Association and I learned a lot from my colleagues in other departments. It could not be more true with MACO. Uh, as a newly elected county executive, I, I learned that I needed help. I needed someone to bounce things off of. I needed to hear what issues were being addressed in other jurisdictions. Uh, I just needed someone to work with me as a family, and that's what MAKO provided. Uh, uh, it, it was great. Uh, my term as president of MAKO uh, was very beneficial and rewarding, but there are a group of people who are there to work with you. We don't come from the same party. We don't come from the same position on many issues, but we all work together for the good of our constituents, the taxpayers. Being a, a member of MACO is imperative for a small county as far away from Annapolis as what Allegheny County is. Uh, our nickname is Mountain Maryland. We truly are. Uh, 
uh, were much different from any place else in the state of Maryland. And MAKO uh, has a keen sense of what's going on in Annapolis. They have an idea of what bills will be introduced this coming legislative session. And we have very few elected voices in Allegheny County. Uh, we've got a senator that takes care of Garrett County, Allegheny County, and part of Washington County. So we have one voice in the Senate. Uh, we have one delegate that takes care of uh, Garrett County and part of Allegheny County. We do have one uh, delegate that takes care of just Allegheny County, and we have another delegate that's part of Allegheny County and part of Washington County. So uh, between the House and the Senate, we've got four voices. So it's uh, quite imperative that we gain a larger voice by being a member of MAKO. I was very honored to uh, ask to be asked to join the, the board of MAKO uh, this year. MAKO is a wonderful organization. With MAKO, they're a resource. What I do is I take that information that I gain from the many meetings that you can go to with MAKO, and you take that information back to your community. You take that information back to your, your colleagues. They have the most, most up-to-date information here in Annapolis because they're here talking to people all the time while you're back in all parts of the county all parts of the state you're not able to come to Annapolis as, as often as they are but they have that information that you can take back and and talk about the bills in your community but they give you a statewide project pr perspective also what about best practices best practices. We can f talk to our colleagues when we come here and we can find out uh, information on a bill they're working on that can make your community better. If you have any questions about this video, your benefits as a MAKO member, or any aspect of county government, please don't hesitate to call our office at 410-269-5500. You can also reach us online at www.mdcounties.org.